Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from cgcookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today we're going to be looking at some techniques within Blender to model a rope. Now we're going to be using something that's pretty cool in, in that we're using an array modifier to take an individual model segment of rope and duplicate it along a path such that we can do anything with it afterwards without having to model the entire rope. This allows us to have a lot of control and it's a lot of fun to play with. So let's just get to it. First things, just to make things easier, I'm going to go ahead and just switch to just my single layer one to turn off all my other objects. And then I'm going to hit spacebar, add mesh, circle. And I want to use just a six, six vertices rather than the default 32 and click OK. Now going into edit mode, I want to rotate this circle such that it's per er, parallel to the Z axis. And then I'm going to hit O to turn off my proportional editing tool as I just happen to have it on by default. Now, from the side view, I want to rotate it such that these two sides are also parallel to the z-axis. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now what I want to do is go ahead and just move this up such that it's just directly above the origin point. It doesn't have to be exact, but just fairly close. Next, I want to go ahead and duplicate this twice such that I have a triangle or three separate circles. I can do this very quickly by just going to the edit buttons. And under my mesh tools, I'm going to use the spin duplicate, but I want to turn the steps down to three, such that now you can see exactly what happens when I hit spin duplicate with these vertices selected. I first get a question mark, and this is because I have two different viewports, and it needs to know which viewport to work from. And since I want them duplicated like this rather than like this, I'm going to click on my right one. And there we are. Now, before we go any further though, we have one slight problem in that we have a duplicate circle here on top. And this is because Blender, when you tell it three steps, it's told to duplicate three times. So it would be one, two, three. So we just need to hit X and delete those top th those, that last circle. <coughs> now here's where it actually starts to get a little fun, but also a little tricky, and can take some time kind of figuring out how this is going to work exactly. But I've gone ahead and done this for you. So what we're going to do is we want to rotate each of these circles such that they, the normals on them follow the direction of a coiled rope a little better. And this just helps keep our mesh nice and clean and for a denser mesh keeps it from getting any kind of nasty like twisted faces. So what we're going to do is with my mouse cursor over the top circle I'm just going to hit L to select the entire object. And then I'm going to hit R to rotate, Z for it to lock it along the z-axis, and then I'm going to type negative 45 on my number pad and hit enter. So I've just rotated it along the z-axis a negative 45 degrees. Now I want to take the next circle, so I hit A to deselect, L to select this one, and rotate it along the y-axis of 45 degrees. Now on my third one, I'm going to rotate along the z-axis 45 degrees as well. There we are. Now, this should work fine. There's a possibility I ha may have one of these reversed, but we can go back and change that if needed. So from here is where we're going to start seeing our rope really come together. And I'm going to hit A twice to deselect and select everything. And then we're just going to hit Extrude, Only Edges, and while holding down Control, move this out one full large unit. OK, so now we have three individual strands of our rope. Now before going any further, or no, um, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and add some slices. And I've gone ahead and figured this out, and in order to get this to rotate around equally such that these vertices, after spinning an entire loop, will end up perfectly aligned with these, we're going to need seven different, or seven cuts within this. Because basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to cut this, this into slices and then rotate it, one, two, three, etc., such that we get a coiled effect. So I'm going to use my knife tool to do this, so I can just hit K, knife, multi-cut, and jump this up to seven. There we are. And then we can just draw a line across and hit, hit enter. Okay, so now we've got all of our different cuts. And this part's going to be a little tedious, but we'll just kind of, kind of work through it fast. What I'm going to do is I want to just deselect these first three loops because I want them to stay right where they are. That's my starting point. 
and these end ones are going to end directly where they're at right now. But we've got to rotate them around first. So um, if you uh, are quick and have caught on, what I've done is I have seven or eight loops now that are going to be rotated 45 degrees each, such that it'll end up with one full 360. Hoping my math is right there, assuming that I've figured this out right. So we're going to just rotate these along the x-axis. So it'll be rotate x 45. Oh, now notice I've got one big problem here, I believe that we're not rotating around the cursor. So we first need to hit period to rotate around the cursor, and then we can do that again. Okay, now we'll go in and holding down Alt Shift, right click, we're gonna go in and deselect those last three, rotate X 45. Now we can go in and check and see if we rotated these correctly. This one looks good, this one looks good, and this one looks good. Or does it? Let's look and see. Good, good, and good. Okay, so now we're just going to go right through and rotate each of these 45 degrees at a time. So we deselect three, rotate X 45, deselect. Rotate X 45, oops, deselect. Now this is one thing where it would be great to have macro recording, um, which hopefully will be coming up in Blender 2.5, as then we could record that first step as a macro, and then just click repeat, 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 which would be great, but we'll keep wishing for now. And thanks to all the wonderful developers who have put in all their hard time and gotten the Blender to where it's at today. Okay, there we are. So now you can see we have an excellent coiled rope. To see this a little clearly, let's go ahead and add a subsurf modifier. We'll just turn up the levels to 2 and then hit Set Smooth. Now you'll notice that we're getting this streaking, and this is because we have some normals that are reversed. So we can just go into edit mode by hitting tab, select everything, and control N to recalculate those. Cool. Now, this is where we hope that we have everything right. And what we're going to be doing is add a array modifier. And here in the edit buttons, just array. And now I'm going to turn off the relative offset, and I want a constant offset of 10. Perfect. Now you'll notice that lined up really, really well. Um, you know, there's no gap between the individual pieces. And now we want to do one more thing. Such that we don't get this line, we want to click Merge. And what that does is it merges those end vertices. Now you will notice one thing that unfortunately seems to be a bug within Blender, is that we still seem to get some distortion here, almost as if we've added a crease or some weighting to those edges in subsurf. However, if we click apply, that immediately goes away. So it seems to be just a bug in the array modifier. But for the time being, you know, it's not it's not a big concern. So here's where it really starts to get fun. Now that we have this very, very, very short rope, if we just start jumping up the count, all of a sudden we can get a long rope. But now, what if we want to, say, coil this around something? Well, this actually gets really easy. We're going to turn this fixed count back down to 1 and set it to fit to curve length. Now we're going to add a add curve. Let's just add a path. And then we'll scale this path up. like this. And we can hit tab to go into edit mode. All right, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. So now you can see with this path selected, it's called curve. So if we select our rope object again, and in the fit to curve length, type in C tab to autocomplete or C R curve. And just like that, it automatically fits to the length of the curve. Pretty darn cool. But wait, it gets even cooler and frankly, a lot of fun. Let's go into edit mode. Let's just select this last one and just pull it out. Check it out. As we are making it longer, the array modifier automatically works with it 
and changes as we go. So it's completely dynamic. So you can set your curve to any length you want and the rope will just go with it. Now you will notice that as I move the curve, the rope does not follow it. This is because we need to go in and add one more modifier. I'm gonna turn this down a little, a little one just to save a little power. We need to add one more modifier and that's a curve modifier. And we wanna set this to curve. Now when we move this, it follows with it. However, you will notice that one thing is that it's now shortened. And honestly, I don't know why it's done that, but um, and we can just do some tweaking to kind of help figure that out. And, you know, oh, actually, I do believe I do know why. There we are. FS selection to cursor. The problem was that my origin point on my rope was different than the origin point on the curve or on the on the curve right which you actually want them to be identical now one thing that i'm honestly not too sure of is that we seem to have some squashing here at the ends um that is one thing with the the curve objects is you do need to sometimes do some tweaking to figure out exactly uh why things are getting distorted if they are um you know, sometimes the curves can be a bit finicky, but it just takes some tweaking. But there you have it. Just like that, we've created a pretty darn nice rope, you know, that we've got pretty darn good control of. In fact, we can just subdivide this a lot. And now, even though, you know, these this may not be perfect for every situation, but imagine, even if this was the exact shape we wanted, imagine modeling this entire thing by hand, or taking that one segment we had, going in, duplicating it, moving it over, duplicating, moving it over, um, removing double vertices, changing it, you know, trying to rotate each section a little bit by hand, it would be a royal pain. And way more work than it's worth. So with something like this, we're able to get a pretty darn nice rope with all the control that we need without too much trouble. So there you have it. Go have fun doing some rope making. And thanks for watching.